so uh, we are starting uh, with few cousins. Uh, from the beginning, Pavel was uh, one of the coordinator. I think nowadays he is the coordinator uh, leading his few cousins program. Uh, I think it was pretty exciting and uh, one of the most successful projects of QWERT. Uh, okay, Pavel. Uh, okay. It is yours. Great. Thanks. Thanks, Abu. Thanks uh, for this introduction. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Pao, uh, and as Abu said, uh, I'm currently a vice chairperson of, of QWERT and the coordinator of the QCousins department, which is one of the departments uh, within QWERT. Uh, and uh, I'm also coordinator of QPoland, which is one of the QCousins within QWERT. So during this talk, I will tell about this QCousins program, the QCousins department of QWERT. I will also tell a bit about QWERT, about uh, our initiatives and uh, what you can do if you join us, if you decide to, to form the next QCASIN in your country or in your um, area. I will also tell about uh, uh, some activities of, of QPOL and just to give you an example uh, what, what you can potentially do. Uh, I'm also founder and CEO of the Quantum AI Foundation, which is a non-profit organization behind QPOL and so supporting uh, QPOL and uh, formally in some for, formal uh, activities that are uh, sometimes necessary to, to, to organize some, some events. Uh, so in fact, QWERT is also uh, formally supported by QWERT uh, Association that is um, officially uh, established and registered in, in Estonia. Uh, all right, so uh, let's, uh, let's start talking about, about QWERT. Um, so, uh, QWERT is an international organization, international initiative aiming to build an open, inclusive ecosystem of quantum technology so that um, everyone, every hardworking individual or organization could have um, equal access. Uh, we focus on education and, uh, and, and research. We have several projects, so later during this talk, I will tell about some of them. Uh, but in general, we can say that QWERT is a global network of individual groups and communities collaborating on education, implementation of quantum technologies and research activities. So here at the bottom, you can see the link to the website. So there will be also some links uh, at the end. Uh, so as Abu said, QWERT was established uh, several years ago uh, by um, researchers, educators, quantum enthusiasts from uh, five countries. Uh, so Poland was one of one of those uh, countries, Poland, Latvia, uh, Hungary, um, and Balkan, and Turkey. Uh, and uh, we already have several projects, uh, and uh, we have already grown uh, a bit. And so currently, we have 26 the so called Q cousins. So you can see the list at the bottom here. Uh, but uh, there are two new Q cousins uh, currently in the so called entangling process. Uh, so this is, that, this is how we call the process of forming new Q cousins. So these Q cousins are operational local groups all around the world, uh, willing to popularize quantum technologies and quantum software and to involve more people to the field, but working locally uh, and or internationally. So we organize uh, as, as Q cousins, we organize events locally, sometimes also internationally. So Q cousins are also encouraged to uh, to collaborate and to organize some some events uh, together so such international collaboration might be very beneficial uh, but uh, we are primarily responsible for uh, organizing this local quantum computing communities uh, in in our countries so we have five uh, key, uh, keywords global so engaging we would like to engage every country uh, cooperation uh, by acting together we can achieve more openness so as i said at the beginning our goal as keyword is also to build the open inclusive ecosystem of quantum technologies uh, diversity so we want to engage more women uh, and also younger people even people from high schools uh, so that's why juniors is our fifth uh, keyword um yeah so we hope to reach maybe even 30 q cousins uh, later this year um, so uh, there is a department within QWORT that is responsible for uh, organizing um, uh, these new local groups, new local Q cousins. So I'm the coordinator. We also have a vice coordinator and, and several members. If you would like to join us, if you'd like to join the Q cousin program and form the new local group in your country, 
Uh, we have the guidelines for QCousins. So these are guidelines on the website of the of QWORD and the QCousins program. Uh, so first of all, you should read the guidelines and accept um, all the rules and feel free to contact us to start the application process. It's good to have a group of people, uh, at least uh, two people, but of course the more is better because when you organize events like hackathons or workshops or some um, webinars, then um, it's always better to have uh, more people who can help you. Uh, it's uh, it's also strongly recommended to have good connections with academia. So it's recommended to have at least one senior researcher or one professor. Uh, but uh, in general, it's good to have both. So senior researchers and students, PhD students. So usually students, PhD students can be engaged at this uh, lower level in um, organization activities. And uh, senior researchers would be rather responsible uh, for the merit side and ensuring that uh, all the work that we do or the Q cousins do uh, is uh, is correct. Um, it's also necessary to have some group members who have completed uh, one of the previous events like workshops organized by QWERT. Uh, so here I mentioned the QBRONS workshop because the QBRONS uh, workshop is uh, one of the main events that we that we organize and we'll later tell them more about about this bronze uh, event. Uh, but this is an example. So in fact, this is a sub page on the QWERTS website. This, uh, this is the website of, of this QPoland cousin that they also coordinate. So if you decide to, to form a similar group, uh, you can also create um, your uh, individual email address, create your social media accounts, your groups and profiles, mailing lists. Uh, you can have a Discord server for discussions or Slack, whatever you want. Uh, as QPoland, we also have a newsletter uh, that we uh, release once per month, and we have an application form for people who would like to, to join us, right? So on our website, we also mention um, the affiliations of the representatives uh, of, the, of the members uh, of, of our QCASI. And we've organized uh, eight workshops on quantum computing and programming. Most of them were the introductory level workshops like bronze, but last year we also organized the intermediate level workshop that is called QSilver. So soon I will tell more about these workshops. And so far we've handed out more than 300 certificates. So for those participants who um, just want to get a certificate, uh, there is such an option. So we have some homework. So currently this process of, um, of, uh, of issuing certificates is standardized. So there are some homeworks. And if the participant of the workshop um, obtain a sufficiently good result of the homework, then uh, they uh, can get uh, the certificate. Uh, so here I mentioned the Quantum AI Foundation because uh, this is a nonprofit organization that we also established in Poland. And we also strongly recommend uh, and suggest to all Q cousins to organize similar local nonprofit organizations in their countries, because when you would like to attract some sponsors and um, get some get some funding for your projects, or would like to sign some agreements with uh, for the catering, for example, or for uh, just recording some events. You would like to buy some licenses or get some grants uh, from the public sector. It's it's good to have a, a legal entity like association or or foundation. Uh, and in case of Q Poland, the Quantum AI Foundation is this non-government organization supporting uh, this Q cousin and our activities. Uh, so I've mentioned that um, the primary workshop, the main, the most important workshop that we organize is based on the so-called QBronze uh, materials. So these are open source uh, materials. As you can see, there's, uh, there are links to, uh, to our GitLab repositories where you can find um, our materials. So these are uh, Jupyter notebooks. Uh, so we have different versions of, of bronze. So we usually use this Qiskit. Uh, version. So all these notebooks are in Python, of course. Uh, and uh, usually they're re relatively um, low formal uh, requirements to, to, to join because we just expect people to have some basic uh, uh, necessary knowledge of, of mathematics like uh, linear algebra or probability, uh, and also um, some basic experience with programming in, in Python. Uh, but in our repository, there are also uh, some prelim preliminary notebooks that can be uh, can, that can be also used for preparation to uh, to this to this workshop, of course. Uh, and uh, this workshop usually takes about sixty or twenty hours, so we, we organize it um, during usually four or five uh, days. Uh, 
And uh, we also use these bronze materials to organize the so-called entangling workshop. So the entangling workshop is the for first workshop that we as Keyword organize together with these local groups, with these new uh, Q cousins that we would like to establish, uh, just to see how the cooperation uh, is going on. And uh, we, we always evaluate the group that apply to form Q cousins to see whether they are strong enough. And during this, uh, initial workshop that we organize together, we can also evaluate further whether this this uh, team is suitable and whether we would like to to proceed and and formally uh, establish and announce the, the new Q cousin. Uh, so later, Q cousins uh, can also organize some some other initiatives, more advanced workshops like Silver. So Silver is uh, also uh, based on Kiskit and Circu. So it's all also uh, everything is open open source in our uh, GitLab repository. So this workshop is based uh, on quantum Fourier transform and, and Shor's algorithm. Uh, there is also QNickel, which is also introductory level workshop focused on um, Deutsch, Deutsch Yosa algorithm, and uh, Grover's algorithm, basically. Uh, so as, as QCousins, one of your main responsibility would be to organize such workshops based on this uh, training materials to your local communities. But of course, if your workshops are, uh, especially when your workshops are online, uh, you can also invite uh, people from other countries as well. And when you join the keyword, uh, you can also contribute and uh, help us in preparation of new educational materials. So we have the project that is called Q Kitchen for this. So in, within this Q Kitchen pro project, we just work together uh, in the Q education department on, on, on developing new educational materials that we can later use uh, in our workshops. And we also have a Q research department that also um, has several interesting initiatives. So one of them is Q intern program. Uh, for which uh, currently there is an open application for, for interns, for students who can apply. Uh, so initially the senior researchers, professors from all over the world can apply and propose their projects uh, that they would like to propose to, to some students and later students uh, can apply to become the interns and uh, later during several weeks uh, of the summer, usually in July and August, they can collaborate with the senior researchers and can be guided, mentored by the researchers uh, and at the end of this QIntern program, they can propose uh, or they can, they can present the results. Uh, if the results are good enough, they can also work together on uh, scientific publications. And why we are building this quantum computing ecosystem, right? So as you probably know, there are still some obstacles on the road towards something that we could call quantum advantage or quantum supremacy. So of course, there's a need for quantum competencies. That's why Education is important. We need better quantum technologies, so that's why it's important to do research. There is also need for real-world applications, especially in uh, practical applications in business. Uh, there is also need for finding from private and public sector, and of course, there are also need for talented people. So, if you are interested, we invite you to join to follow our um, website, website of QWorld and QCousins program. You can um, contact us by email, you can follow our profiles on social media, or join uh, the Discord server of, of QWorld. So thank you for your attention, and if there are any questions, I'll be happy to answer. Okay, thanks, Fala. Any question? So I can ask a question. What is the ultimate number to reach a uh, number of Q cousins? Uh, so our initial uh, goal was to have 50 Q cousins by the end of, I forgot, 2023. So probably this year. This year. But it's, yes. <laughs> but so we'll not reach 50 Q cousins. It turned out to be quite challenging. Uh, but we are growing. We are still growing, as you can see. And um, yeah, so at, at some point we decided to slow down a bit and uh, focus on the quality on the groups that we entangle instead of the quantity. Uh, so, so that's why we also decided to evaluate the groups that apply to us to, to form these Q cousins. Uh, so it will take some, some time, but uh, this is also opportunity for, for the audience, for all of you to contact us and, uh, and, and try to organize these local groups. Uh, yeah. Okay, okay. There is uh, one more question. Is Q research dedicated to only research? Is Q education dedicated to 
to research, dedicated only researchers. To research? Uh, so re researchers, but as I said, only students, right? So in this QIntern program, also students can apply or even even high school students, I guess, right? I, I think that Aritra is here with us, so maybe he can also clarify. But but I think the high school students can can also apply. So you so uh, of course, if you would like to propose uh, a project for interns for students, then I think it is a formal requirement to to be a researcher uh, or have a PhD, maybe at least. I'm sure. Oh no, it's it's not it's not a requirement because I also was a mentor in some projects and I'm still PhD candidate. Uh, so it's not a formal requirement, but um, if you if you would like to be the intern, or I know that in the Q research program there were also some study groups. So the study groups had also meetings, regular meetings once per let's say two, several weeks, uh, and uh, of course everyone was invited, right? So there are no strict uh, formal requirements as far as I know. Okay. Okay. Thanks, Paula.